Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to share with you some little tips on how you can make meal prepping a little bit easier. And these are things that I do to prepare for the week. So if you guys do enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing before you go. So we usually take a day out of the week and we go grocery shopping as a family. And before we go grocery shopping, I like to do a quick little scan of the fridge and just kind of take inventory and see if there's anything that we're missing for the week, what didn't get eaten. And that way we know to either buy less of it. And it kind of gives the fridge a clean slate so that when it's time to meal prep, everything has a home again. But we do like to do a vinegar wash with all of our fruits and vegetables, which is basically just a splash of white vinegar with some water. And we kind of just let everything soak for about two to three minutes. We just use plain white vinegar. We get it from Costco. We usually buy a giant bottle of it because we use it for a lot of different things. And what this does is it helps clean your produce from any dirt. It also helps prevent um, any mold from growing on them. And even though we do try to buy all of our produce organic, this is still good to do because sometimes your produce can touch other things that do have chemicals in them. And this is going to get rid of all of that. You'll notice we also do the vinegar wash on things like limes and lemons because those are displayed in the same bowls as the stuff that we do eat. And sometimes I do like to zest some of it for our sauces and I want it to be nice and clean. I don't want to have to be washing last minute. We also take the time to individually dry every single thing before we put it in its permanent home so that mold doesn't grow on it. So we do keep our lemons and limes out on the counter. I also recently found these little fresh papers on Amazon and they're really cool. You basically just grab a little sheet and you can put them either directly in the drawer where you store your produce or you can put them inside of different containers and this really helps keep them fresh for a lot longer. It's pretty crazy and I was a bit skeptical at first, but it actually works really, really well. By the way, you guys, if you like these little containers that I store my fruit and also my food prep containers, I'm gonna be giving a full set of them away on my Instagram. All you have to do is go follow me on there for the rules. It's just at Missless Heart. We love using fresh herbs around here. They tend to go bad pretty quickly if you don't store them properly. So one of my favorite ways of storing things like green onions is actually keeping it in the plastic bag that it comes in and then filling it up with water. And you stick this in the fridge and it's going to keep them alive a lot longer. Or you can also fill up some mason jars with water and then store them like that on your counter. Although if you tend to keep your home a little bit on the warm side, they may not live very long on your counter. You might wanna keep them in the refrigerator and you can just cut them as you need them. Another thing that's also super time consuming when it comes to cooking is peeling garlic and chopping it. So I like to do all of that ahead of time. And a little trick that my mom taught me with the garlic is to actually preserve it in olive oil. And if you guys actually take the individual pieces of garlic and shake them up in a mason jar really hard, it'll actually make them super easy to peel and you don't have to smash them. So putting them in the olive oil, you can actually keep them in the fridge for about three to four days and you can just use them as you need them and they're not gonna go bad super fast. Now, if you want your spices to last you longer than a week, then I would recommend freezing them. And a really easy way that you can do this is by just getting an ice cube tray and chopping up all the spices that you wanna preserve. You can mix them if you want. You can have like garlic and parsley in one, maybe just like cilantro and green onions in another, and then just fill the rest of the ice cube up with extra virgin olive oil, and then you can freeze it, and these will stay good for two to three months in your freezer, and then you can just throw it in your hot pan when you're ready to use it. And my last favorite way of preserving veggies is by pickling them. I do have my own little concoction that I absolutely love right now. It's just apple cider vinegar, maple syrup, a little bit of cayenne pepper, and then salt. And it's seriously so good. You basically just chop up whatever vegetable. I just happen to like red onion. And then you let that marinate in the fridge for at least 24 hours. And you can eat this straight if you want to. You can add it to your food, to your salads. It is so good. I definitely think you should do what works for you and your family when it comes to meal prepping. I've tried at portioning out all of my meals in the past, and while it did work, it was a lot of work up front, and now with the toddler, I don't have the time to do that. So I do things a little bit differently now. I still like to fully cook a few items up front, especially those that take a really long time to cook, like quinoa, rice. Those also stay good in the refrigerator for three to five days, which is great. One thing that I did start doing when it comes to cooking things that require liquids is I use bone broth instead of just regular water. Not only is it gonna add additional flavor to your dishes, but it also adds a lot more nutrients. 
I also love making things like spaghetti sauce in large batches because this is one of those items that freezes really, really well. And I will typically freeze half of it in little Ziploc baggies, um, just perfectly portioned for four people. And then the other half, I will keep it in the fridge and that can be eaten within three to five days. But a little trick that I like doing, especially to get my toddler to eat vegetables, is blending a ton of really good veggies and adding that to my spaghetti sauce. So when it comes time to eat this, we can actually just eat the meat sauce by itself if we wanted to. It would be a complete meal in and of itself. I find that things like fish and chicken don't really take that long to cook. What takes a long time is preparing the marinade. So I do all of that up front. I have it already pre-mixed and I just put it in a jar. I can typically remember what exactly I made, but if you guys are making different marinades that look similar, you may consider putting a label on your jar so that you don't get them mixed up. I'll make sure to leave the ingredients to this marinade down below if you guys want it. I also like to add fresh herbs, garlic, onions sometimes, so that's why it really helps if I can do all of this work up front. And then when it comes to making dinner, it is so fast because my marinade is already done and I will usually make like a sheet pan dinner, which basically means no dirty pans. I will set the oven to 450 degrees and I will roast my veggies with olive oil first. And I do that for about 15 minutes while I have my fish marinating with that pre-made marinade. And then after those 15 minutes have gone by, I will then take the sheet pan out, add my fish, and then cook it for another 15 minutes. And we are done, dinner is served. I can serve that with whatever salad I have prepared for the week. Our go-to lunch item is typically salad. So I do like to make sure that we have lots of options for our salads so that we don't get tired of them. Um, so one of the things I love making is like a fruit and veggie salsa. I really just change it up depending on what I bought that week. Sometimes I make mango salsa. Here I did make a strawberry salsa, which I will have the recipe down below, but it's basically just strawberries, cucumbers, red onions, um, and then for the dressing, we have some sesame oil, some sesame seeds, balsamic vinegar. And what I love about making salsas is that you can add them to your salad and they can actually substitute your dressing because it starts to kind of release its own juices from the uh, fruit and veggies. Or you can also add this on top of your chicken or on top of your fish to add a ton of flavor. I also make sure to have other options that don't have any type of vinegar on them just so that they're a little bit more versatile and I can actually snack on them throughout the day if I wanted to, if I didn't want to have it on a salad. So this is one of my go-tos, which is just tomatoes, mozzarella. I will add some basil to it. I also make sure to have lots of toppings on hand and I do like to store them in the refrigerator to keep them fresh for a lot longer. I like keeping things like walnuts, sliced almonds, cashews, and storing them in an airtight jar makes them last so much longer, which I really appreciate. If you guys have never made your own dressing at home or you don't know where to start, you feel like it's overwhelming, all you have to remember is the base of the dressing, which is basically one part acid and two parts oil. So in this case, the acid is my balsamic vinegar and I'm doing a fourth of a cup of it. And then for oil, I'm using extra virgin olive oil and I'm using half a cup of that. You can build on it from there. You can add salt and pepper. You can add Dijon mustard, garlic, onions, like have fun with this. If you don't have any type of vinegar, lemons also count as your acid. So you could do a fourth of a cup of lemon and then half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. A muffin tin is your best friend when it comes to preparing breakfast foods. I love making egg bites because you can customize them to everybody in the family. You can make some with just egg whites, you can make some with no cheese, others with bacon, like whatever your family likes. If you guys are interested in the recipe that I use, I will link it down below. I basically mix three different cheeses, a little bit of milk, and I put in a blender so it comes out nice and creamy, and then I just top it with whatever toppings I want. If you guys have been following my channel for a long time, you know one of my favorite combinations is goat cheese and sundry tomatoes. So I'm still making those to this day and they're so good. Those are actually my husband's favorite too. Bake them for about 15 to 17 minutes and you can do a bunch of other stuff while those are cooking in the oven. These are just great to grab and go if you're somebody that's always on the go or if you're at home, what I love doing is actually making them into little tacos. I love these sprouted corn tortillas because they're a lot healthier for you. And I will just warm those up. I'll add my egg, some black beans, a little bit of avocado, cilantro, hot sauce, and I have myself a healthy taco for breakfast that took me less than five minutes to make.
So I hope you guys enjoyed these meal prep hacks. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe before you go if you did enjoy it. And also don't forget to head over to my Instagram if you guys wanna win all of these meal prep containers that I shared throughout the video. And I will talk to you guys next time.